before upgrading this lighting, you first need to understand how it's working at the moment. So I'll just explain that fairly quickly. I've got direct lighting from the sun that's providing this highlight and image-based lighting which is providing some general ambient light from 16 simulated light sources scattered around in the sky somewhere, though considerably weaker than the bright sun. And also uh, some haze effect here which is getting added in as things get more distant from the camera. I've got no sky dome colour, which is just a direct light from above that doesn't cast geometric shadows. It does respond to bump though. And ambient's not really playing a part in any of these materials except a tiny bit in the water. So the only thing we're really concerned with here is the light sources in the sky. So let's have a look at those. I go into the sky lab and we're in image based lighting tab. You can see this is the half dome, the sky dome of HDRI which was generated from the bright sky and I captured the bright sun in that though when I captured it I turned the intensity of the bright sun down that's it to zero but left it as a visible object so I was able to get the sun glow color that effect there and then by using it as a backdrop adding it to the sky and using sky color I was able to combine that with the custom sky settings so here we've got custom sky settings so this very dark blue is getting added in over the existing sky so it just creates different gradients in the sky looks nice and the other thing to note is in sun and moon we've got the shadow intensity turned up at 100 and no shadow softness a diffuse of 200 that gives very strong sunlight we can render in scene here to show you that and a bit of specular which will work with the water depending on the angle that the sun is it has it happens it's not not taking place because there's and the sun's right over here somewhere behind these rocks though what i want to do now is upgrade this lighting to true ambience lighting and i'm going to use the obscure lighting process and this works well because we've got a hdri image to work from so just remind ourselves how this looks at the moment the thing about using obscure lighting is it provides very good ambient light simulation because you have this process where this surface is interrogated like light probes come out from the screen if you like go into the geometric world and then touch the surface and then are scattered by the surface and these feelers go out and investigate other areas and report back uh, instead of the the other process which in regular rendering is is far more basic it just goes out touches the surface and reports the color dependent on what light's shining on it you don't have this investigation process that allows you to catch very advanced ambient light right i've said enough let's just set things up first thing to do is to create a standard radial light i'm going to change the family to orange so you can see it's not um, an ordinary light source it won't be by the time we edit it the most important step here is to make sure remember to change the name of the object to capital B background it must be spelt correctly and it must be capitalized or this won't work the next step is to edit that light source turn the diffuse to zero turn the specular to zero set it to true ambience optimization use gel click on procedural reset the material to the default gray check out of that click include and select background which is itself which may seem like a strange thing we want to make sure that this light source does not have any other influence than the influence that we intend so that's almost entirely set up for this purpose now just select edit and enlarge it as big as it'll go so it encompasses the entire scene right your next step then is in the Skylab so go into the Skylab and you want to modify image based lighting to light from inside we don't need to cast shadows you do need to apply to light source this will act as a multiplier because we're probably going to need a much higher value for the HDRI effect to work in this case because it's working in a secondary way it's lighting the inside of this invisible light source which is the radial light we've created and then things in the scene are seeing that even though you won't see it directly in the render the geometry in the scene is capable of seeing that as a light source i'm going to increase this by a factor of 10 so i'll make that 500 and 
you see things get very bright but this isn't any longer a very good guide for what we're going to get out of this you also need to make sure that you turn off true ambience optimization so when you've clicked on that hopefully that will now be unchecked the point with that is that we're direct lighting the inside of an invisible light source we're not relying on this to do any clever trambience tricks on its own we're setting this up so it works as we want it to we also want to include only the background so as it happens that's already checked so if it's not checked make sure that's checked it was excluded before for whatever reason probably because I'd set things up so you can now see it's gone dark again because the only thing that's being lit from the inside is our light source and that's not visible in this particular render mode or preview right so everything is is almost set up now to get this to work the only thing we need to do now is change the way the renderer works and possibly modify the light output for our Sun if we light this side for example with a bit more light I'm going to try uh, 300 then that will offer a sharp contrast uh, but also because of the way that the light gathering process works with Trambians this side which appears totally dark at the moment will send out feelers and investigate this side and if it sees this side the light will get transferred to that surface so not only will this be seeing the light source that's wrapped around our world and getting general lighting it'll also respond to the bright light the sunlight that's getting scattered off this surface over here when we change rendering mode since we're using premium effects we can take advantage of soft shadows it uh, doesn't have very large overhead in premium effects I'm just going to set that down to 15 which is at the top end really of how soft you should make shadows in a landscape when you're at this distance from the object even lower values will still be appropriate if you set it up too high then you'll make the impression that the landscape is miniature because you only really see very soft shadows and under certain circumstances one of which is when you're looking at small objects either of which when the sun's very low which it is fairly low and uh, then you get the elongated soft shadows right that's all that set up I'll just check out of here now and look at the render options so go over here go to render options we want to go premium effects now I think because the material that the, is on the ground that is quite noisy we can get away with a lower raise per pixel the lower value you have here the more noise you'll see in your scene for previewing we'll try four so we want true ambience scatter correction boost light we'll lower the maximum ray depth this value not only can controls how a ray, say traveling through transparent materials, how far it will, how many layers it will trans, try and go through before it returns fully black. It also determines the depth to which the feelers go when it's investigating with true ambience methods. So when it's doing its pathfinding in, in the render, this will tell it how many scatter steps to take before it gives up. So I'll set this down a bit so that shall mean it does a bit less work so we'll improve the render performance and we'll also remember to turn on soft shadows otherwise turning them on in the sun wouldn't make any difference now in theory if I've set that up all right we should be able to preview this render so you'll see it's not the fastest render mode we've got it at four rays per pixel which will result in a lot of noise and it's already at five minutes so but you can see it's you know, we've got a reasonable balance of light, we've got the bright over here, we've got this some information in here, we've got some fairly dark areas, so that's good, we've got good contrast range in the image. So the only thing to do now, having set that up, is switch it to 36 and see what it predicts it's going to be for the total render time. So you can see it's not going to be that fast, possibly looking at an hour or two. Well, it'll give us a report just here in a second. Oh, an hour. But So there you go. I'll just let this render out you can see the results in about an hour's time so the point is you may have to meddle with the values of the sunlight or the HDRI effect to get a decent balance as it happens through having done this quite a lot in different scenes and also doing trials for this scenes I knew what sort of values were going to work but otherwise set the rays per pixel down to a low level try a test render look to see whether you've got bright areas and dark areas in your scene check to see the areas aren't getting burned out completely and that you're not got large portions of darkness and in that case then you'll have a reasonable balance and it should work for you at that point okay then that's the end of the video hope you found that interesting and that you'll experiment with this 
method in your own renders. For the final shot, I'll just show you the completed render.